Okay, so we're going to have a quick overview of our RDK family. So here's the uh, RX62N uh, kit you're probably familiar with. This is the long form factor. You can see the uh, Ethernet connector on the left hand side, USB serial on the other side. And this is basically the, uh, the blue version, version 6 that is in production. We have many of those in stock in a California warehouse. So that's the 62N. The other member of the family is the RL78. You just uh, show that for the form factor. You can see it's a smaller board, 5.1 inch by 5.1. And the RL78 is on this side. But you can see the overall layout has been uh, uh, um, making more um, compact here. So now, once we have those two family, we are introducing this new, this new product, the RX63 and RDK. And you can see we shrunk the form factor to the same 5.1 by 5.1 inch uh, form factor. So side by side, they look extremely uh, identical, uh, the RL78 and the 63L. And we are kind of optimized our packaging solution this way. And it's the same clamshell uh, we're shipping uh, both spots. So this is a new product we're launching this, this, uh, this quarter, uh, RX63 and RDK. And you can see you have the Ethernet now on this side, uh, the same form factor, I mean the same LCD, and basically the same interface, except we're adding up as well a couple of PMODs on this side. So here's the, uh, the kit once you open the board, and we're going to go next through an out-of-the-box experience by unpacking the kit. So here's how we ship the kit. is using uh, the same clamshell, the same insert uh, technology as the previous kit. So besides the kits, we are shipping uh, two USB connectors, one for the host function and one for the slave and for the debug. And part of the kit is that uh, paper insert. We have the board features and list on the back. But on inside, you will find a couple of quick start guide uh, DVDs. So this is the installation DVD version one for the RX63N softwares. And we are coming up with four Quick Start Guide, US letter format folded in half. So the first Quick Start Guide is the uh, non autos version, Renaissance only. The other, the second Quick Start Guide is the Micrium base uh, demo. We also package the kit with IR systems, so we have a Quick Start Guide for IR. But what is new in that kit is we actually have a Exosite Quick Start Guide would give you uh, six simple steps to install and connect your kit to the Exosite portal. So we're gonna go uh, in the next few minutes into the demonstration of the out-of-the-box experience and connection uh, to the Exosite portal. It's extremely, extremely uh, simple to connect uh, following those uh, quick steps. So that's in a nutshell, the bit of material and content of the um, new RX60 3N RDK. Okay, so we've we've seen um, the content of the starter kit. We open up the clamshell and we throw the different quick start guide and DVD. Uh, now we're going to focus on the Exosite factory demos, but I'm going to go through the live demo with the board, and I think it's speaking uh, uh, better this way. So we have the RDK the way it comes from the kit. The first thing you want to do is remove the pin uh, sticker here. So we have access to the screen. And uh, obviously the first thing you want to do is connect your ethernet first on this side. And this is connected right now to the Renaissance office LAN. And you're going to connect power. I'm using this USB cable for just for power at this point. So the first thing you're going to see is a factory demo come up with a full TCP IP stack. We'll enumerate the network, run HDCP client, get access to the network through an IP address, and we'll display this information uh, before booting um, the exercise uh, status on the cloud. Uh, this demo was provided by uh, Micrium, who provide both the OS and the TCP IP stack. So, you can see the status on this board right now. It says cloud unavailable, just because it's a brand new board that was never registered on the portal. So now we're going to turn our attention to the portal itself. 
So any browser that you have connected to the internet uh, is access, can access the portal. You will write the uh, portal address, which is renaissance.exosite.com, and you will create a login address for your account. So I'm going to just go ahead and uh, use my existing account and show you how we can um, basically connect to this portal. Okay, so I entered my account. So now I am logged in on the portal as my account. I have access to my dashboard. So you can see there's a couple of windows that comes pre-recorded with, uh, with your account. The first window is getting started. This is the window we use to uh, uh, connect the new board to the cloud. And you have a couple of pre-recorded videos by Exosite that explain uh, through windows, through videos, how to control the RDK, how to create events and alerts. So the first thing you want to do is click here to add a new RDK. So the next uh, window comes up with a device setup. So we have up to four boards currently supported by the Exosite portal. We have the RX 62N RDK, RX 63N RDK, we have a 62N RDK with the Red Pine uh, Wi Fi solution and the RL78 with the Gamespan Wi Fi solution. So I'm going to go with the first one, which is supporting the RDK over Ethernet. And then you click on Continue once you selected your RDK. The next thing is uh, obviously each board is unique, we'll have a unique MAC address, and you need to enter the MAC address from your uh, kit into the portal. So you will find the MAC address right there uh, to the right of the LCD. And each MAC address will start with four predefined bytes. So those are 00305508. Uh, each RDK is from the RX600 family will carry those four uh, bytes. The only thing you need to configure in your kit is the last two bytes. So you can see here 2E B3 are the last two bytes, which are unique to your RDK. So now I'm going to go in my uh, window here, select my device MAC address, which is 2E B3. And I'm going to give a significant name to my uh, device here. Let's say it's a webcast demo RDK. So you can identify which of the target you're talking to and click on continue. So once you um, define the MAC address and the name of your platform, it will show as a successful um, enrollment to the network and says successfully enabled. And you can see that's a Renaissance board and you can find another uh, support address for uh, uh, the Exercise support team. If you click quit at this point, you have a board that should be connected to the network. So it's already active. You can see here I have a list of boards uh, that I used in the past. The last one I just uh, enabled is 2EB3. It's at the top of the list. And you can see the status, it says on, okay? So that's already connected to the network. And you can check that through your web browser. But another way to check that, if you look at the LCD of the card, uh, it should say, um, obviously, connected to the cloud. So the cloud status is reported connected. The previous status we had was unavailable. And that's a good indication that you are connected to, to the cloud. So now you're happy. You have your interface up and running. You have your board up and running. And you need to simply um, uh, dial to that board. And you can see the resources that you can access to. On this left, uh, on the right side of the screen, you have uh, two parameters you can control. You can ping the watchdog timer and you can control the LED. So one of the methods to control the LED is through direct uh, inter interface to that parameter. Just click on that LED control parameter and you can see the status of that uh, variable. And obviously this is an integer for format. It's actually a binary, 0 or 1. And we're going to demonstrate that by clicking um, 1 to that uh, value. We're going to turn on the LED. So I'm going to click Update. And while I do that, I will count 
uh, uh, the seconds to figure out how long it takes to go to the cloud and come back. So I'm going to click here, update, and count up. Zero, one, two. It's already on. So you can see the command went to the cloud, came back, and was uh, executed very quickly. So I'm going to do this the, the other way around. I'm going to turn out, turn out this LED. I'm going to write zero to my uh, data value and update this content. Zero. You can write direct values to that field and control that LED wheel over the internet. So try again. I'm going to update one. It comes right away. I'm going to write zero to turn it off. Zero, one, two, it's off. So basically, you see the response time through the cloud. It can take one, two, maybe four, five seconds. It depends on the traffic. Uh, but you no, know, by doing those transactions, you're going to the exercise portal from your PC and you come back to the RDK uh, as well on the internet. So this is a direct method of writing data parameters to the board. I think what is interesting with this portal is you can create a widget. So what is a widget is basically a user interface that you can configure on, on demand uh, through your dashboard here. So you can see I have a dashboard with three windows. I'm going to add up another window with a custom defined widget. So the way to uh, configure a widget is very simple with a dashboard. Uh, you're going to look at this icon called Add Widget. Click on this one. And then you're going to configure that widget. So one of the first thing is you want to define the type of widget. So you have so many different uh, shape and form of that widget. I'm going to select the very simple one, which is called the on-off switch. And that's going to be able to uh, create a graphic interface to do that control. And I'm going to say on-off switch for the name of that wi widget. Continue. So now we're creating that widget, but we need to assign that widget to resources on the board. And the first thing we want to do is basically identify uh, the source of the of the data uh, variable. And you can see when I click on data source, I have access to several different boards. I'm going to look at my webcast demo. And I will control the LED by clicking on that icon here. And you can also control the uh, refresh rate. So I'm going to refresh every second. And I'm going to click on Submit to create the widget. And the message I have back is the widget, widget was uh, created successfully. So I'm going to click on Quit. And now I can see uh, the update the status on my dashboard. This new widget is that window. And I created that on-off uh, toggle switch here. So now if I click on this uh, graphic um, icon, I should be able to control my LED directly through the widget. I'm clicking on. And you can see right away, I have my LEDs being updated in, in almost real time. So I'm going to click on off the other side of the uh, switch, zero. And you can see right away, the LED uh, was turned off. So creating a widget is a very powerful uh, way of creating a user interface, configuring your GUI, adding up more flexibility to the, to the dashboard. And the other interest of that is you can connect several boards. Here I have only one RDK, but you can have multiple RDKs and set up different um, control windows for each of those RDKs. So you've seen how we create the uh, widget through the, through the dashboard. Uh, I can see also that I have several boards connected to, uh, to my portal. I can define a way to remove boards. For example, I created a board earlier in an earlier test. And I can decide to remove that board. So you have this um, uh, customer uh, interface called device information, and you can basically add or remove a new board. So I'm going to say, and, and here the concept of board is a device. We're removing a device from the portal. I'm going to try to remove an earlier RDK, and I have to type confirm in that uh, window to remove that RDK from the portal. So I click delete, and basically, it's going to remove the resources attached to that kit. So you can see I removed one RDK. 
So that's a way you are creating multiple target board, uh, all Renaissance board at this point to the to the portal. Now you, you get to uh, back to the dashboard and you can also control your widget. You can edit your widget and you can delete. I'm gonna show you basically what you can do here. You can uh, change the size of the widget. You can control name, title, refresh rate. I'm gonna put two seconds. And you can see my widget now it's a small one. And turn it off, turn it on. So I configured my user interface. And obviously I can also delete the widget when I don't need it anymore. Okay, so this is a quick overview of the out of the box experience with the new uh, RX63 and RDK. We've been running the factory demo, the way it came from uh, Exosite and uh, Micrium. Uh, you didn't have to program anything. It's really an out of the box experience. You can get also more details by looking at the uh, quick start guide. Very nicely uh, done uh, by uh, Exosite. And basically you are in business to uh, interact with the, uh, the cloud and uh, play around with, the, with its connectivity. Uh, thank you for your attention.